Before movies were made about how Mark Zuckerberg screwed over his best friend out of billions of dollars, the original story of betrayal in the tech industry happened right at the inception of the industry. If I were to ask you who created Microsoft, many people would rightfully say Bill Gates, but Bill Gates was only one half of the reason behind Microsoft's success. Bill Gates started Microsoft with his high school best friend, Paul Allen. In fact, it was Allen who convinced Bill Gates to drop out of Harvard and start a computer software company. The pair would go on to build the biggest software company the world has ever seen. But behind this success was a ruthless and cutthroat Bill Gates and his ruthlessness knew no bounds. During the 90s, Bill Gates' ruthlessness made him one of the most hated people in the world. He was repeatedly accused of using unscrupulous business practices to crush his competitors. Bill Gates' ruthlessness extended far beyond his competitors. He was known for frequently berating employees who didn't meet his insanely high expectations, going as far as to fire them on the spot. But by far the most egregious case of Gates' ruthlessness was his treatment of his best friend and co-founder, Paul Allen. What Bill Gates did to him was so cruel that Paul Allen and Bill Gates would go years without speaking to each other, with Paul Allen writing some damning words about Bill Gates in his memoir. This is the story of the most heartbreaking betrayal in tech history, a story of how billions of dollars ruined a friendship. The history of Paul Allen and Bill Gates starts earlier than the founding of Microsoft. Their pair initially met at Lakeside High School, an exclusive private school in Seattle. Bill Gates was in 8th grade and Paul Allen was in 10th grade when the two began connecting over their shared obsession with the new teletype computer that their high school had just purchased, going as far as to form the Lakeside Programming Club to explore the possibilities of the computer. When the club was tasked with creating a scheduling program for their high school, they purposefully programmed it in a way that would put Bill Gates in classes where he would be the only boy, with hopes that this would increase his odds of getting a girlfriend. But sadly, by Gates' own admission, the scheme didn't work, with the critical element which Gates lacked being social skills. The boy's passions extended beyond programming mischief. While in high school, the pair started a company called Trafo Data. Trafo Data was a computer program that they built for their local government that provided traffic analysis and recommended solutions for traffic problems. While Trafo Data ultimately wasn't a commercial success, the experience taught them valuable lessons about entrepreneurship and laid the groundwork for their future endeavors. Paul Allen was two years ahead of Gates and would graduate and attend Washington State University. Two years later, Gates would graduate and choose to study over 3,000 miles away in Boston at the prestigious Harvard University. But the two wouldn't be separated for too long. Allen would only spend two years in university before dropping out to work for Honeywell, a computer company based in Boston, the same city Gates was attending university. While there, he would frequently try to persuade Bill Gates to drop out and join the nascent personal computer industry. Gates at the time was studying law, intent on following his father's footsteps, who was a prominent lawyer in Seattle. Gates would finally be convinced to drop out when one day Paul Allen came storming into his room holding up an issue of the popular electronics magazine. On the cover was the Altair 8800, one of the first personal computers ever made. Allen told Gates the Altair represented everything they used to talk about when they were younger. Gates and Allen always knew that sometime in the future, computers were going to go mainstream. That time in the future was happening right before their eyes and they were not a part of it. So Gates gave in to Allen's persuasions and dropped out. The pair, brimming with excitement, contacted Ed Roberts, the CEO of MITS, the creators of the Altair 8800, to get a meeting with him to pitch their version of BASIC for the Altair 8800. Ed Roberts agreed to a meeting in 8 weeks, but there was a problem. The boys didn't yet have a working version of Altair BASIC. In fact, they didn't even have the Altair computer, so they proceeded to spend the next few weeks tirelessly coding an Altair 8800 emulator and then a version of BASIC for the Altair. A day before the meeting, the pair flew to the headquarters of MITS in Albuquerque in New Mexico to pitch their Altair Basic. While on the plane, Allen realized that they had forgotten to write a bootstrap program to read the tape into memory. Allen began frantically writing the program on the plane and finished just before the plane landed. There was only one copy of the code and it was on a punched tape and the code had not yet been run on the Altair. It was a very risky situation, but luckily for the boys, the code ran smoothly on the Altair. Mids agreed to distribute Altair Basic with the Altair 8800. Paul Allen moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico to work more closely with Mids, where he would be later joined by Bill Gates. Growth came quickly to the newly formed Microsoft. By the end of 1978, Microsoft had 13 employees and its first international office was founded in Japan. Then in January of 1979, 
Microsoft moved to Seattle, Washington, while Paul Allen oversaw Microsoft's technical operations as the chief technologist. In 1980, Paul Allen spearheaded the creation of the Microsoft Soft Card, which allowed incompatible software to run smoothly on the Apple II computers. The Soft Cards were very successful and grew Microsoft's business. 1980 was a particularly important year for Microsoft, with Paul Allen famously saying, before 1980, Microsoft was an important software company. After 1980, it was the essential one. What happened that year was the deal of the century between Microsoft and IBM for the licensing of an operating system for the upcoming IBM computer. Paul Allen played a pivotal role in the negotiations and helped to secure the right to sell the operating system to other computer vendors. Led by Paul Allen, Microsoft was able to deliver on IBM's lofty demands and aggressive timetable for an operating system, the result of which was MS-DOS. MS-DOS cemented Microsoft's future as a titan of the computer industry and laid the foundation for its future dominance, and Paul Allen was the man behind the creation of this giant. It was even Paul Allen who came up with the name Microsoft, not Bill Gates. In his memoir, Paul Allen said he was the person who came up with all the great ideas and Gates would make them happen. In other words, Allen was the visionary behind Microsoft and Gates was the savvy businessman and salesman. Unfortunately, in 1983, a mere eight years after the founding of Microsoft, Paul Allen had to resign from his position as he had been diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Gates and Paul Allen were known to work insane hours in the early days of Microsoft, often pulling all-nighters. This lifestyle had begun taking a toll on Allen and he had to take a step back and this is where the trouble began in the relationship between Gates and Allen. Initially, the ownership of Microsoft was 60-40 in favor of Gates. Why not 50-50? Well, Gates argued that while he was still at Harvard and Paul Allen had moved to New Mexico to work with mids, he was taking a salary while he wasn't. So it was only fair that Gates would get more of the shares than Paul Allen. Paul Allen would later regret not pushing back on this, but at the time, the non-confrontational Allen accepted the terms. Gates' ruthlessness would not stop there. He would later negotiate Paul Allen to a 64-36 split, arguing that he was working harder amongst the two, which Allen accepted. But the most painful incident was when Paul Allen over heard Gates discussing with Steve Ballmer about how to dilute Allen's equity in the company, complaining that he was so unproductive. He said this while Allen was fighting life-threatening Hodgkin's lymphoma. The plot involved Bill Gates issuing stock to himself and Steve Ballmer, diluting Paul Allen's shares in the process. Allen felt betrayed, especially since he was such an instrumental part of the success of Microsoft. Although Gates never went through with the plan, the damage had already been done. This incident was not known to the public until 2011, when Paul Allen published his memoir, The Idea Man, where he describes his side of the story as the person who came up with the ideas and created the vision for the future of Microsoft. After the publishing of the book, Allen and Gates were not on speaking terms for over a year because the book spoke about some insanely ruthless behaviors of Gates, like how he used to belittle people and go into tirades if people didn't meet his standards, and of course, his mistreatment of Paul Allen during the most difficult time in his life. In 2018, when Paul Allen passed away, Bill revealed that the two had passed things up for years and had been back to speaking terms. When most people think of Microsoft, they think of Bill Gates, but this is a little unfair to Paul Allen, who is just as pivotal as Bill Gates in laying the foundation for Microsoft's success. According to his memoir, Allen was the idea machine and visionary that trotted the path for Microsoft's future. Gates was the executor and chief salesman they were a good partnership, merely relegating Allen to the background of the computer industry as just the other founder of Microsoft is a grave injustice. Even though he left Microsoft at such an early stage and on such a bad note, what he had accomplished in this short time at Microsoft fundamentally shaped the world we live in, for better or worse. Paul Allen was the genius behind the curtain coordinating the show on stage from the shadows, while Bill Gates was the man on stage presenting the show. Paul Allen deserves as much credit as Bill Gates as a seminal figure in the technology industry industry. Thank you for watching.